All right, I'm back. And last uh, upload was about Oprah and her intrigue in being president. Just a, just an intrigue, and it was a long discussion about it. It was a, it was a good one, and uh, it, the discussion hasn't even really ended. Actually, in G Chat, Gmail Chat, uh, Cedra and I were going back and forth, and she brought up a very good point. A very good one. And that is that uh, back when Alec Baldwin said that he might run for presidency, nobody was giving a damn that he was wealthy. Why do they care that Oprah is wealthy? Why is there such a, a crap storm about that? Why, why, why is there such talk? And you know what? <clears throat> there was talk. There was there was talk uh, about from a lot of groups of people around the Internet. It wasn't like even half the country, but. A lot of Oprah supporters, and you have Oprah loyalists, and then you got the haters, and then you got the blind haters, and you got those that's in between, um, and you've got political analysts, you've got various forms of what ifs and how she would do things, why she would do things here and there, and some of that was kind of hashed out um, in the discussion that we had did before this one. Uh, but you know, there's a reason and Oprah is an example. See, she's being made an example of, and it's by everyone, whether it's for her or against her. Oprah's neutral. She's just, Hey, you know, it's, it's, she's more like, uh, you know, if you want to, you're interested in buying that candy bar in the store, you know, I think I might just pick that up. Uh, nah, that's, that's where she is right now when it comes to this. And people are pretty much, uh, quote unquote losing their minds uh, if you want to say something like that but why what happened but what the truth is oprah is uh everything around this is basically a an autoimmune response see the people of the united states we're not quick witted we're, we're just not you know it, we're not i mean you know you, you can see patterns of Things going on in politics, and we just will not pick up on it. And you know, because if it serves the racist, the racist won't say anything. If it serves the minorities, the minorities won't say anything. Even if what it what they aren't saying anything about is hurting others. So long as it serves someone, they they're not going to say anything. That's that's terrible. That's that's a horrible way to be. Uh, you know, you, it, it's got to be good all around. That's how I see it. Not perfect. No one's going to be perfect. Nothing is going to be perfect. But it can't just be, I don't care who you hurt so long as you serve my interests. That's, that's not, that's not cool. Uh, w what's going on is like the Alec Baldwin thing that Cedra had brought up and stuff. And I was look, no one cared. You know, he's wealthy. He's rich. So what? You know, but here's what happened. All right. This is, this is what, let's say Oprah was to run for president. Why is she not going to win? Why would Oprah not win? Now, she would galvanize the female vote. She would galvanize the votes of some guys. All right. Now, why would she not win? She she can't. She won't. Because while we are not quick-witted, we are overly defensive. We are overly defensive. So, I mean... Hey, if, if one white person screws you over, then all white people are screws you over. And, and you got to fight against that. You got to fight the, the, the powers that be. If a black person does something to you or someone in the family member, then all black people are evil and yada, 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 stereotype, yada, yada. No matter if it's an uh, Asian American, uh, Latin or Mexican American or any, it, hey, we are overly defensive. Okay. If a corporation comes in, and digs up the front part of your yard and says, well, ain't nothing you can do about it. Then all corporations got to go away. <laughs> that's what, that's what we do. But what happened is, um, we, we, um, we didn't want stupid anymore. Bush came in, he, he's wealthy, he's rich, you know, thanks to his dad. And we found out he's, he's a flaming idiot. <laughs> he's just a damn idiot. A little fucking idiot. That's what he, that's what he is. And we were like, no more. He's an idiot. He 
hates gays. He wants to start all these wars. He's drives up the deficit. He, he bankrupted the country. Basically. I mean, look, just, I mean, like basically he did not bankrupt the country. I'm just saying basically, but you know, we said no more, never again. We hated Bush so much. We were so embarrassed by Bush that that's how Obama got in. Cause Hillary back then didn't even talk policy. Hillary just started that Trump, not Trump. Oh, God damn. Hillary just started that Obama was, you know, born in Kenya, not here. <laughs> she started all that mess and people ran with it. She didn't, she, she just did personal little attacks and whatnot. People weren't buying it. They just won't. And besides, when Obama was running, you know what happened? The same thing that got Doug Jones in office. Black people and other minorities came out in droves and voted. They had, they had a quote unquote reason this time. Bill Clinton was one of the first reasons. The, actually, you know what? Reagan was the first. Clinton was the second. Obama was the main. And what's the, what's the pattern? Clinton, he had the three strikes rule. He made sure to help target black people and other minorities. Hillary Clinton supported with her super predator comment and then Obama, what did he do? He got in. He pretty much did a Clinton style. We're going to help everyone. We're not going to help the rich or the wealthy. I don't need it because I already got the money. Yada, yada, yada. No golden parachutes. And he sold everybody equally under the bus, except for the wealthy, as he used all of our money to pay off the debts of the banks and gave practically nothing back. Did not help us at all. So that we we see that pattern. So Oprah trying to run for presidency, you got the idiot for Bush. So we don't want an idiot, all right? A rich idiot. We don't want a rich idiot. Then Obama came out and the racist really got into an uproar. The RNC was all about some racism and stuff and all that. So, okay. So we can't have a black person because of that because, you know, you don't want to ruffle feathers. Plus, Obama had his chance he did some good and he fucked us though. He, he just catered to the wealthy. He got his big money and now he's gone. You know, he's, he was like, I got paid, son. I'm out. And people are like, never again. Fuck that. Obama is not, no. So, okay. So that's going to help ruin her chances. And then after Obama, who do we get? Trump. We didn't want another Bush. So we got worse. We got, and, 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 and Trump is just the massive liar. I mean, I'm telling you, if he told the truth, it'd be a mistake. You have to question himself in the mirror. That's how much Trump lies. But then again, Trump is literally a symptom of a virus. That's all Trump is, just a symptom. Trump can't keep his mouth shut because he was never trained to. <laughs> Trump, I, I I might do a separate video on that. I, I've done one, but you know what? No, I'll just say, I'm going to wrap it up. Trump doesn't have a filter because Trump never had to have one. He say what he got to say, do what he got to do, and everyone else got to prove him wrong. They can't. If they try, he sue him. And when you get threatened to be sued, you're going to get sued for way more than he's going to put into the court. So you might as well just settle and move on and not question anything. Trump is used to winning despite his bankruptcies he will win he knows how to just rip people off that's that's his thing so now america is seeing that he has the best words he went to the best schools he he did all the best things his health is so awesome and perfect that he's the most healthiest person in america believe me <laughs> that's that's trump and people are starting to see that it's it sucks. Like I said, we are not quick with it. We're not quick with it. It's taking these racists and these bigots enough to be like, wait a minute. Okay. 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 He hates the same black people I hate. He hates the, the foreigners and the job stealers. LOL, job stealers. <laughs> LOL, everything. He, j and so they're like, but is it really worth him jacking things up like this? So they're slowly coming around and. Trump said, well, he's, he's, he was never super wealthy. He's rich, but he's never wealthy. So people are like, all right, okay, this is stupid. As a spoiled rich brat 
and he's going to bankrupt us and he don't care. In fact, he even said it that he should bankrupt the country just to make some money off of it. And he's making money off of us because we're paying for his Mar-a-Lago, everything, golfing and all that crap. So people are defensive now. Oprah's wealthy. She is super wealthy. And people are like, no, no, no more rich, no more famous. She's famous. That's the other thing. Trump famous because he got mass name recognition. So that's got to go. So Oprah can't win because of that. And it's okay, but she's a woman and she's a black woman. Yeah, Obama's black. Now he ain't like so much that black part of him because he wanted to make sure everybody knew that he wasn't black. He was biracial. Every human being in this damn country is biracial to some extent. You know, and and the way racist and racism work, if you got any modicum of black in you, you black. So a lot of racists might want to do some Ancestry.com and, and, and scare the shit out of themselves. Um, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, side note, I thought about Family Guy. Lois is like, hey, ma. I'm banging a black man. <laughs> it's like, okay, Peter, Peter's black. Okay. <laughs> For like that episode. <laughs> um, so she has that going against her. Obama's black. She black. People will be like, nah, we, we tried that. We've had the idiot. We've had the rich idiot. We've had the rich lying ass idiot. We've had the, the fake minority supporter. We've had, the super fake minority supporter. And he's like, okay, but she's a woman. How is that? Because, and you know it, Hillary. Hillary ran and she's basically, she was like Trump, just smart about it, but lied about everything and then got caught. Really, I remember when she was losing to Obama and she lost Wisconsin and she was, and she was pissed. She was pissed that, she, that, that Wisconsin didn't vote for her. And, you know, she had some insults for them. <laughs> <laughs> that's Hillary. It's, uh, Hillary is—is is she a powerful woman? I don't know, but she, you know what? Oprah was backing her, and I'm like, how could you back somebody that pretty much calls, you know, e e everyone that looks like you per se a super predator? That's a terrible situation. <laughs> so when people think about that, they're going to be like, no, no, Hillary was crooked. Hillary was terrible. Hillary was. You know, lines, hey, you know, you got to tell the people what they got to hear. But then you tell the CEOs and big donors the truth that they can do whatever they want because they know how to. You're bankers. I don't run a bank. You can do whatever you want, make up your own rules and stuff. And these bastards are able to write laws, credit card laws and all this other stuff that we got to abide by. And they are just citizens just like this. But we don't get to write laws and stuff. So think about that. So Oprah has issues. She everything about her. People are going to think, hey, we can't do that again. We can't. So basically, we're going to have to find. All right. <laughs> it's it's going to be difficult. But if you want to get away from it, you have to find a poor working class, um, a U.S. born transgender minority female that's not african-american she's gonna have to be like brazilian american or mexican american or latin American. she's got to be born here but her parents got to be from somewhere else she's got to be poor but super college educated not a private school because then she looks all you know like pampered and stuff so <laughs> i don't know how in the world we're going to choose the next president but i'm gonna say this the next president, just like every other, every other run will be chosen for us. And we got to pick between the ones that are chosen for us. And we got to find a way to get ahead of that. Now, if Oprah somehow ran and her policies, because we don't have a background on her, you know, not a full one anyway. You know, and the way she voted before, she was just as informed as we are. So, yeah, she did vote for um, wars in Iraq. She voted for a lot of, for, for NAFTA. She wanted that stuff, you know, but she didn't, she only knew as much as we did. And a lot of us wanted NAFTA until it happened. And then we're like, oh, crap, what did you do to us? I didn't know what NAFTA was. I was like, look, just, 
I just sat at home when Clinton was put in. I was like, look, just, I, you know, I don't know nothing about this political stuff. Is he Democrat? All right, cool. You know, Democrats, in my belief, Democrats, well, you know, they don't hate you. They're Democrats. They like minorities. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we have to, we have to get ahead of this. That's the only way to get our, some of our voting power back. We have to get ahead of it. We have to find candidates. They're out there. It could be someone listening. It could, I mean, I could run for president, but see, here's the problem. We are in a country where, and this is what's, we're not quick with it. <laughs> we're not. I don't have name recognition. I don't have money. I don't have power. I don't have everything that would disqualify Oprah. See, that's why I say this, this we, we're not quick with it, but we're overly defensive. Oh, yes, everyone would say, no, Oprah, no, anyone else, because you're wealthy, you're rich, and all you're going to do is just cater to the big donors. You're not going to think about us. You never have. You never will. But then someone who's unknown that might have everything, I ain't saying I do, but just someone out there might have everything this country actually needs as as a leader, commander in chief, and a judge picker, and all this other stuff, and they will not get handpicked because they don't have everything that Oprah has. Why would I choose this guy? Nobody know him. He's not famous. Why would they choose me? I'm not wealthy. I'm not rich. I don't have the money to put out ad campaigns and stuff. So, <laughs> not quick with it. But we are overly defensive. Oh, Oprah ain't getting in. But I sure as hell ain't getting in. So what's the medium? We're going to need some kind of Latin American trans transgender female <laughs> who is poor but highly educated and has all the credentials to be president. <laughs> Except the problem is transgender is hated in this country still. Just because people shut up about it don't mean it's liked. It's like racism. Just because people shut up about it doesn't mean it's not here. It's always going to be here because people don't want to change. Racism can end overnight, literally overnight. <laughs> but, hey, like I said, we're not quick with it. You know, we see the pattern and if the pattern caters to us. Then we want to support that pattern, even if it hurt others. That's sad. That's that's how it is until we change it. That's literally how everything is. It is the way it is until it changes. That's how the world works. It's only going to work that way so long as you make sure it works that way. You got to change. We have to change. If we don't change, nothing changes, right? That, that's how that works. I, hey, a transgender girl as, as president, yeah, she might even be hot. <laughs> I hope her policies are better looking than she is. So that's all I care about. So basically, I hope she's freaking gorgeous because I want her policies glowing. <laughs> that's just me. I'm just having a little fun with it. I find it tickled. I, I really came into this and I was really serious at first. I was kind of on, on the side of, I'm going to start yelling and cursing all day, all night, but I didn't. I, I somehow tickled myself. Um, I just, I just want everyone to just know that I'm, even though I don't have all the answers, I don't have the best answers. I don't have the best words, but I try to give some modicum of a solution, something, <laughs> something for you to chew on. Maybe it'll broaden your horizons for something else. Maybe it'll help you spread my horizons a little bit. You know, I mean, I got some trees blocking mine, so you know that knock them down. Let me see something beyond this. <laughs> this is Cedric Kennedy for Comparative Reasoning. Thank you for listening.